This is one of multiple videos in my Wireshark packet analysis and ethical hacking course. Have a look at the link below for previous videos in this course. In this video, we're going to discuss an issue that you may encounter when capturing packets. You've got to think about how packets flow in a network and how specific devices treat packets. You need to be careful when using Wireshark to capture packets or frames from a network. You need to think about how traffic flows through a network and make sure that you're capturing in the right part of the network. So as an example, if PC1 opens up a browser and connects to the server, where do you need to capture the traffic? Now it's obvious that you may capture here or may capture here, but what happens if you capture over here? Will you see the traffic sent from the client to the server. Notice we're seeing a whole bunch of traffic here. We're seeing EIGRP, we're seeing spanning tree, we see other protocols, but let's filter for HTTP. So at the moment, we see no HTTP traffic. What happens when PC1 opens up a browser to the server? So I'll close this down and let's open up a browser and go to 10.1.1.100, so the server. Do we see any HTTP traffic? And the answer is no. If I clear the filters, I'll see a whole bunch of traffic. So as an example, I can see DNS. So there's DNS queries. So let's filter for DNS. Notice the client 10.1.1.1 sent a DNS query, you can see query here, to the DNS server. The source IP address is 10.1.1.1. Destination is 10.1.1.254. Now in this topology, the router is acting as a DNS server. This is a Cisco router. So show version here shows me that I'm running Cisco iOS software on this router. Now if you're not familiar with Cisco, again, you get free access to my CCNA course. So that'll teach you a whole bunch about Cisco routers but you don't need to know that to use Wireshark. But if you wanna be a serious network engineer, I strongly suggest that you learn about Cisco because Cisco are the biggest vendor out there. But what I've done here, if I type show run pipe include DNS, I have set up this router as a DNS server through this command, IP DNS server. Now these commands may be confusing, so let me show you that. The router is also acting as a DHCP server or dynamic host configuration protocol server. In other words, it's allocating IP addresses to clients dynamically. The PCs are not configured with static IP addresses. They dynamically get IP addresses from the DHCP server. So this allows me to configure the route as a DHCP server, and this command allows me to create entries in the DNS server running on this router that says gns3.com has this IP address. So as an example, if I ping gns3.com, that resolves to this IP address. Domain name server or domain name system, DNS, allows us to resolve easy to read names to IP addresses. This GNS3 topology is not connected to the internet. It's running locally on my computer. So GNS3.com, if you surf from an internet connected device, will take you to the actual GNS3 server. But in this example, it's simply taking us to this server in the topology. Now what I'll do is stop this Wireshark capture and I'll save this. Basic Wireshark capture two. So you can also once again, have a look at this capture if you want to. But notice here, the client is sending a DNS request to the server. The reason this was captured is we were capturing traffic on this link and the PC is sending a DNS request to the router, which is the DNS server. Source MAC address is the PC, destination address is the router. We can prove that once again by going to the router and I can use the command show interface gigabit zero slash zero. Notice the MAC address of this router is this and that's the destination MAC address of the frame. So the PC sent a DNS request to the router. Source IP address is the PC, destination IP address is the router. 
I can prove that once again by going back to the router. Remember, I typed this command. There's the MAC address. There's the IP address of the router, 10.11.254. Source port number is an ephemeral or random or dynamic port number. Destination port number is a well-known port number. 53 is the well-known port number for DNS. So again, layer two frames, layer three packets, layer four segments. In this case, however, it's UDP or user datagram protocol. It's not TCP. DNS in this example is using UDP. Source port again, destination port. Forget to layer five to seven. So top layers of the OSI model, you can see it's a standard query. Let's go through that standard query. So the queries are in this example for MSN. So something was happening in the background, but let's have a look for gns3.com. But notice Windows just right out the gate is querying for a whole bunch of stuff, including bing.com. So a whole bunch of queries there. Let's see if we carry on a bunch of Microsoft, MSN, keep going. A lot of queries, but this is the one I'm after. Notice gns3.com. So the Windows PC, in this example, queried for gns3.com, and the server, hopefully at some point, replies, here we go, server reply, back to the client. Notice source port is 53, destination port is the ephemeral port used by the client. Now notice different port numbers were used for different queries. So the Bing query over here used this source port number from the client. I'd have to go back and find the GNS3 query. There it is. Notice 55037 is the source port when the query was made. When the server replies, it's replying back to that port number. And it tells the client the IP address of the server. So the router acting as a DNS server is telling the client gns3.com has this IP address 1011100. .100. And then the client can initiate a session to the server, but we don't see that if we capture traffic on this link. So again, if I filter for HTTP, I see nothing in the output because the HTTP traffic is sent directly from the client to the server. Why? Because this is a switch. It's important to remember that switches do not flood traffic once they know the MAC addresses involved in a conversation. So as an example, if I type show MAC address table, notice we can see the MAC addresses that have been learnt. The switch has learnt about this MAC address on gigabit 00. It's also learnt about this MAC address, and it's learnt about this MAC address on gigabit 01. Now, when I send traffic from the client, so that could have timed out, if I refresh that page, notice it's learnt about this MAC address on gigabit 02. Once the switch learns about the MAC addresses in the conversation, this once again is the server. And just in case you don't believe me, notice this is the MAC address of the server. This is the HTTP server over here. Notice this MAC address was learnt on gigabit 02. Once the switch has learnt about the devices in the conversation, it's not gonna flood the frames out of other ports. It's gonna be switched directly between these two hosts. So the PC with this MAC address, 00, 0C ending in DCD7, in other words, this MAC address, is gonna have its traffic forwarded directly to the server, and the server traffic is gonna go directly back to the PC. So if you capture traffic on this link, you won't see the conversation between the server and the client. That's why you need to either span a port or mirror a port on the switch to be able to see what's going on, or you need to have a network tap or something in the network where you can see the traffic. You've got to get the traffic to your capturing device, otherwise you won't see it. So in the next video, I'll show you how to do that. Let's add a mirror to the topology so that we can actually see what's going on. We both